Hello, Stamper fans. It's me again, Stamper Nan. Uh, welcome to a, another Make It Monday. I decided to change the name because last week we didn't make a card, so I thought that seems silly. So we're just going to Make It Mondays. Um, I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I am live here on my Facebook page every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. If you're watching the replay, I'd like to welcome you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, hopefully, you'll get some good tips out of this video, and uh, you'll tune in again next week. So, hello, hello. You like to make it, make it. That's right. Bing Julian. <laughs> Either that, or if you've seen the Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman show, Make It, that's that's where I think of. I love them. So, Um so this week, because summer's pretty much here, uh, that means waves and playing in the water. So we're going to make this fun wave card this week. You can see the shimmer there from the silver foil paper. Um, and it's using a really cool technique that I learned recently um, with using your watercolor pencils right on your stamps. And so I'm going to teach you how to do that. And this may actually seem... Um, repetitive to some of you. So if you, re boy, words are hard on Mondays, aren't they guys? <laughs> but uh, if you subscribe to my email newsletter, you will have seen this technique a few weeks ago. And so I'm going to walk you through it step by step tonight instead of just a, you know, picture tutorial. So <laughs> already intimidated. I was too, because I got to tell you, I read the instructions. I'm like, that seems fairly straightforward, but Let's see if it really works. And it does. So, you know, some stamps you're going to get better results than others. And so we'll just go with it. But I think you should try it out. And I'm going to show you some alternatives that I shared in my email newsletter. I'll share those at the end. So make sure you stick around because they're all on different kind of paper. So you can kind of see how our different papers react. Um, so let me go ahead and switch the view here. It's like I've never done this before. I'm like, so, you know, what am I doing tonight? I don't know what's going on. Hey, Lucia. Oh, I'm so glad to see you live. And you're not just catching the end tonight. That's nice. Um, so let's see here. Let us start by going over our supply list. As always, there is a link in the video description with the full supply list including cardstock measurements, but I will share all that with you on video as well. So if you like to just watch and not take notes, I got you covered. Click the link when we're done and you'll have all that info. If you like to take notes, we can do that too. <laughs> so we're going to start off with our Waves of Inspiration bundle. Um, this is a brand new bundle to the catalog this year, and it was available uh, on a promotion for a few months before. So, so fun. This is one of those kind of distinctive stamps. So it's got some shading in the images itself. So even if you just stamp it with one ink color, you still get that depth and dimension, which is awesome. Um, you've got your happy birthday, you're totally awesome, your strength, your friendship kind of greetings. So it really covers a, a multitude of occasions. And then you have the coordinating die set. So um, the dies, these two are meant to be layered on top of the stamp, or you can use them by themselves. And I'll be showing you some more examples of that this week, because that's our theme for the week is this Waves of Inspiration bundle. So you'll be seeing more projects with that as the week goes on here on the Facebook page. Um, we've got a couple of great tag um, dies that were meant to cut out our um, sentiments, and you'll see those in one of those in action tonight. We've got some cool clouds and birds. This will cut out that pelican. So lots of cool things in this die set. Okay, uh, We are only using one ink pad tonight and that is our Knight of Navy ink pad, but we're also using our new Tahitian Tide uh, Stampin' Blends. Um, and that's only because I don't have Coastal Cabana and this is pretty close, so. <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, so here we go for cardstock. Let me clear some space. You guys can get a good screenshot of this. We will start off with a base of Coastal Cabana. And that is, let me make sure I'm in the shot, eight and a half by five and a half inches. And that's scored at four and a quarter. And we've got two pieces of Knight of Navy. 
And these are, this one's five and a quarter by four. Plus you'll need a scrap. And I've already put our adhesive sheets on the back of that scrap. Because that'll make life easier later. Then we have a piece of our Fluid 100 watercolor paper. You can just call it watercolor paper. <laughs> and that one is five inches by three and three quarters. We've got a little bit of basic white for the inside of our card. Looks like I might actually get all of this in, in frame. <laughs> um, move this over just a little bit. And so this is the inside piece is five and a quarter by four. And plus we have a little extra scrap, which is, where did I put my grid paper? Just so you know what I've got it as. It's about an inch by three. It's just for the sentiment. So however big you need it for your sentiment. And then the last piece is our silver foil cardstock. And that's part of a, a foil pack you get. So you get like three shades of the silver. And this is five and a quarter by two and a half. And we're going to use that for our wave overlay. All righty. So let's pick all this back up. Whoops. I forgot to let you guys screenshot that. Seriously, you guys, what's wrong with me tonight? There you go. All right. I'll leave that there while we're still talking. So you can get a good screenshot of all the measurements. Um, the other things we'll be using tonight are watercolor pencils. So we're gonna be using the um, assortment number two. We have two assortments. We have assortment number one, creatively named. Um, and I'll be sharing those colors with you in a minute. Uh, okay, you probably got a good screenshot there. Now we'll clean all this up so we can get to work. So this um, pack of watercolor pencils, so they're all coordinated with our colors. So we've got Cherry Cobbler, Flirty Flamingo, Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, Coastal Cabana, Balmy Blue, Night of Navy, and Gorgeous Grape. So some really bright, fun colors, plus some kind of folly ones in there. So that pack will get you a, a good way. Uh, the other pack of colored pencils, if you're interested, have these colors in them, more than this one, so slightly more um, cost. Um, but basic black, basic gray, Bermuda Bay, Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Early Espresso, Melon Mambo, Old Olive, Pacific Point, Pumpkin Pie, Real Red, Rich Razzleberry, and White. And you would think, why do I need a white colored pencil? Well, doggone it if I don't need a white colored pencil because I found some technique a few months ago. And it was using that white one and I don't have the assortment with the white. So I'm going to have to get those too. <laughs> We'll also be using our crinkled seam binding ribbon, um, as well as our little spritzer. So these Stampin' Spritzers come in a two-pack, and they're just literally a spritzer. You just unscrew them and fill them with your liquid of choice. So I have one that's marked water. I have another one that's marked alcohol, and that would be rubbing alcohol. <laughs> And with the rubbing alcohol, you can add um, a few drops of your favorite reinker to make a colored spray. So you can do stencil stuff. You could just do a cool spray over your whole cardstock, all sorts of things like that. Um, I use the water one quite a bit, actually, so it's usually filled. Let's see. And dimensionals, of course. All right. Oh, we'll be using our mini boss, our, our baby boss, our mini cut and emboss machine. And we'll be using the Stamparatus. Now you can totally do this technique without the Stamparatus. I prefer to do it with because I feel like it gives me a little more time to kind of get things down to where I want them. So, um, all right. So let's start off right away with our technique, which is weird. I'm not doing the inside of my card first, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep all my card stock like figured out today. Okay, so when you're doing this technique, it will work on the um, red rubber stamps and it'll work on the photopolymer, but I will say you get a better result or this type of result with the red rubber. And I think I have, yes, I have an example to show you afterwards of what the photopolymer does. So it's just a little bit of a different effect, but you can do it 
So we're going to get our colored pencils out and I'm totally just going to like go to town here. What did I use? <laughs> so I'm going to use our Knight of Navy. I'm going to use our Balmy Blue. Um, is this the Coastal Cabana? And the names are on the pencils, which is nice because that green does not look like Coastal Cabana to me. Uh, Coastal Cabana, and I believe we pulled out the crushed curry to add a little yellow to our waves. Like maybe the sun was reflecting off them. I don't know. But it looked fun and colorful and summery. So, okay. So I've um, kind of pre stamped my wave here. So it's all lined up. That's where it's going to stamp, um, which is nice when I go to put my cardstock on because I want to make sure that I don't get that. I don't have any white edges showing off my, on my cardstock. So that's that. Okay, let's grab our pencils over here. It's harder to do this on camera, you guys. So much pressure. <laughs> so you're gonna take your water and you can use any kind of a spritzer. I really like the fine mist that you get off of ours. So, and they're, they come in a two pack, like I said. So you're going to spritz your stamp. Don't worry if the water gets everywhere. So I started with my curry and I just literally started scribbling on the um on the stamp itself i'm like eh, where is the sun gonna hit it i don't know we'll just mess that around a little and then i came in with my cabana and i went kind of right over that in bits and then around it so it's really just random it depends on you know what you're stamping and how you want it to look so i just kind of kept coming around here and and then I need my balmy blue, which is the lighter blue. And I'll color in the rest of this top wave with that, I think. And we're gonna make some blending happen here. All along there. So yeah, you can see it even in the camera. I mean, it's, it's really unbelievable how well this fills in. And then I'm gonna take my Knight of Navy and I'll just do the rest of it. And these watercolor pencils are so vibrant once you get them wet. It's really kind of unbelievable. I, I like you, Penny, I was pretty intimidated when I um, first saw this. Hi, Pauline. Thanks for joining us. We are doing watercolor pencils directly on stamps tonight. So, okay. So I got it wet. I colored it in with the pencils. I'm not going to worry about this part because I, well, I probably should. <laughs> just in case that hits the card stuff. So we got it wet, we colored it in. Now we're gonna give it one more little spritz. We're gonna put our card stock in. Like I said, I pre-stamped that wave so I kind of know where it's gonna land. So I'm not gonna have any edges there showing. And then I'm just gonna go straight down. I like to use a dry erase eraser. Um, and I just kind of smooth that over. I do this whether I'm doing ink or pencils or whatever. And we lift it off and voila, we have this cool multicolored thing. Now it's wet and it works really well. You can see how wet it is. Works really well on the watercolor paper because the watercolor paper um, is a little more porous. So it does work on a regular cardstock penny, and I will show you that, but it looks a little different. Um, yeah, Lucia, actually Stampin' Up! shared this on their, um, on their Facebook page uh, a couple months ago. Excuse me while I go get a paper towel. <laughs> so when anything's this messy on my stamps and all the water on them, it too, I kind of take a paper towel to it first. And then I grab my chamois and get the rest of it off of there. So my chamois doesn't get too dirty. That way I don't have to rinse them off quite as often. Um, but yeah, Stampin' Up! had shared it and I thought, I've, I've never seen this. And that's kind of a big deal because I've been doing this for 19 years. So <laughs> to not have seen something is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, so let's pull that off of there because I'll be using that again. Um, yeah, so I started off with it on the watercolor paper like we're using tonight. And that is 
my favorite paper to use it on because it does just really blend well. It really makes you look quite artistic, which is lovely. I could use all the help I can get. <laughs> so um, the next thing I'm going to do, let's get the stamping part out of the way. And I'm just gonna let that sit there to dry for a little bit. And if when we're ready for it, it's not quite dry, I'm just gonna give it a quick blast with my heat tool and that'll dry it up in no time. So if you're in a hurry, you can still totally do this technique um, and just dry it with your heat tool. All right, so we got our mini boss out here, our baby boss. And I am actually gonna go ahead and die cut our little sentiment tag right now. And then I'm gonna do that, cool, since I've got my stamparatus out, I'm gonna do that cool little uh, blank die cut technique. So this works really well if you're doing um, multiples of cards where you have to die cut things um, that are stamped. So either stamped images or sentiments, it doesn't matter. Save your blank or your negative. And now you've got your blank, right? Now, so normally you could um, die cut that and then you could try to line up your sentiment on there. But since it's a red rubber stamp, it's a little harder to get straight, so. Oh, very, very fun, Lucia. Your anniversary's coming up. I love that. Mine was in March. All right, let's pop that aside for a minute. And I will show you how to do, um, I don't know, negative die stamping, blanks. I'm not sure what the, t the name of this particular thing is called. There's my stamp set. I'm losing things, guys. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Monday if I didn't lose something. Okay, so you'll see actually on this grid paper that I've got down that I have a few things stamped because I was stamping projects for this week. So you'll know I'm using at least three sentiments this week <laughs> um, besides the one I'm using tonight. So I'm using everything this week. Um, and this is, I set it up so I could go ahead and do this exact technique and I could stamp the blanks. So for right now, I'm gonna put my happy birthday over this way because it's empty. <laughs> I'll pick it up with the plate. Scooch us over a little bit. Okay, where is my, there we go, my stamp pad. Now I will say one of the things I've kind of gotten more used to is to just tap the back of the stamp pad so I'm not rocking it. And I still probably got way too much ink on that. Yeah, but anyway, that's where it's gonna stamp. I'm not moving the stamp at all. So now I'll put that negative right over it and I can get it um, straight because I stamped that crooked, you can tell. And then I'll just pop my magnet down. And then I can put this blank that I die cut out inside that little hole. And I know that my stamp is gonna go right in there. Make sure that it doesn't move. <laughs> so a little tap on the ink pad and I'm gonna do a little tap right here. I'm not even pushing. Oh my gosh, that's perfect, you guys, seriously. <laughs> And the nice thing is, is if that didn't turn out perfect, let's say that I didn't put enough pressure on the H and it didn't stamp at all, it's gonna stamp in the exact same spot. So I could have left that there and come back with the ink or the stamp and it would have fixed it by itself and I wouldn't have to redo that piece. So perfect little stamping going on there. Let's clean that guy off. All right, let's put that aside. So yes, I do love my stamparatus. Comes in very, very handy. Okay, that's all the ink we're using. Let's check on our wave. So there's still a couple of spots that are just slightly damp. So by the time we get the rest of this going, we are gonna be good to go with our wave. Oh, thanks, Lucia. I love that tip myself because you know, you stamp it and then you can just center that thing right over it. You can really get it just where you want instead of taking a guess and hoping. 
which if I'm in a hurry, let's be honest, I'll do. And I've given you guys the tip of, you know, turning your red rubber, you know, over the other way and lining it up with your grid paper too. So there's always that. But I already had my Stamparatus out. Okay, so let's take our card base. We will give it a good burnish with our bone folder. So it lays flat. I think I'm also gonna grab my stamp set because there's a tiny little bird in here. And I think we're gonna go ahead and stamp a couple of those on the inside piece because we like to decorate the inside of our cards as well. So this one, like barely touch to the ink pad and then barely touch to your paper because it's such a fine detail that you don't want to smush. So if you ever have a sentiment that has like really skinny letters, like our happy birthday, um, you want to just barely kiss it to the ink pad and just kiss it to the um, uh, cardstock. Now, if I were stamping that without the Stamparatus, I would have kind of laid it on the cardstock and held it there for just a few seconds so the ink can seep into the cardstock, but I wouldn't have pushed it at all because that's when you get those big fat kind of blurry letters. <laughs> so yeah, definitely very delicate if you have anything that's skinny or tiny. Okay, I think that's all of our stamping done. Put that away, get my stamp and seal out. There we go. Just a little bit in each corner. And here's a tip that I learned watching one of my friends. She always just does one side and then basically um, looks for equal distance uh, on all three of those sides on the corners and then lays it down and then she knows that that last one's gonna be even too. Now, I'm sure if you got a ruler out, it probably isn't, but we're human, so eyeballing is just fine. <laughs> okay, um, the other thing I wanna do, let's go ahead and die cut a couple more things, a few more things actually. So we're gonna start with our silver foil, and I have to figure out which of these I used. This one, I believe. They are slightly different. Let me pull these up here. Now let me turn this over. There we go. So you can see the tops are slightly different. All of the little lines are actually just a little bit different on these two waves. So if you were to die cut them out of a couple of different um, um, uh, yes, Penny, it was supposed to be landscape, but those birds don't know where they're going. <laughs> Cause that's already stuck down. So that's, that's done. <laughs> it's just, they're crazy birds. It's windy. That's what it is. Um, anyway. So if you cut these out of two different color cardstocks or foils or anything and layered them on top of each other, you'd get just this multi-dimensional look, which is really cool. So we're going to use that one for our project tonight. Either would work just fine. We'll grab our baby boss again. You know I always have to mess something up, right? <laughs> but you know what, guys? Not rocket surgery. Nobody's life is at stake. I couldn't scream loud enough, really. You got to work on that. Because <laughs> what? We're only like two and a half hours apart. I should be able to hear you. <laughs> okay. So I am going to angle this a little bit. Because this end right here, it has a big straight edge. And if that went through perpendicular no, parallel to the rollers underneath. I could do it, but it'll give it a lot of resistance. So if you put it a little diagonally, it definitely helps. Now watch, the machine will make me a lie. <laughs> I will say that I use, I used to cut this out on the big machine all the time. Yeah, see, and it's giving me, it's giving me trouble tonight. It just is having trouble catching. There we go. Um, and I, I will say that cutting these waves on the baby boss is a little more resistant 
but perfectly fine. And it's fine for your machine and they fit. So no problem. And um, yeah, obviously nobody reminded me to use adhesive sheets either on this. Oh yes, I already put them on. Yay, me! <laughs> so our adhesive sheets in the catalog are amazing. I'm sure you probably overlook them. Um, very easy to overlook, but basically it's like big sticker paper. So what I had done was I put our adhesive sheet on the entire back of that foil piece. And now I'll get all these little pieces out of here. They come out pretty darn easily. So that's nice too. And when I'm done with this, I can simply peel the backing off and the entire thing will be just like a big sticker. Woohoo! I know, right? I actually remembered to put adhesive sheets on the two pieces I needed adhesive sheets on yesterday. And you might have noticed when I was showing you the die set, I actually put adhesive sheets label right here. So I put them on all the die sets I have now that I would use adhesive sheets for, hoping that I will now remember to use adhesive sheets before I die cut them. Because <laughs> otherwise you gotta go and flip this over and get your liquid glue out or something like that and you know go into all the little spots. And as, as you can see, some of these um, pieces are pretty thin. So I don't have that kind of patience and I tend to make a mess. So I don't like that. All right, so that one's done. The other thing we're going to die cut is some little birds. So we have our blue piece with our adhesive sheet already on it. Yay! And we have these cute little flying birds die cut. Go. We'll just pop that on and run that one through too. So you can see that one went through a lot easier and grabbed quicker because just that one has a lot of ground to cover. So it offers a little more resistance. And I will say on the bigger machine, it um, that definitely the waves definitely go through easier because you have more ground on your plate as well. So okay. We have all of our pieces. No, we have one more thing I wanted to cut out. I did not put this on the supply list because it is not necessary. But if you are somebody who is, we will say frugal, because that's a nice word. Um, if you're watching your budget and um, you really want to make your card stock last longer, I recommend getting the rectangle stitched dies. I think it's this one I want. Yeah, the second largest one there. I'm actually gonna grab the big boss for this because it's very hard to angle this guy. Actually, I don't even think it would fit on the mini boss, so. Yes, my, Lucia, mine live in my adhesive drawer, which is like right in front of me when I'm stamping. So if I need dimensionals or anything like that, I just reach into that drawer. Do you think I can remember the adhesive sheets? No, apparently I cannot. <laughs> I had to label my dies. All right, and I'm gonna use a little piece of post-it tape. Now you guys might be wondering what I'm doing. Basically, I just need the outside edges of this piece of Knight of Navy, okay? So I'm just gonna pop this rectangle die in the middle, and angle it a little bit so it goes through easier. See, that one catches much easier because you've got a lot more surface on the big one. <laughs> cheap on cheap. I'll own it. That's right. <laughs> Frugal, we call it. <laughs> or you care about the planet. We can put it that way, too. You know, use what you got until you can't use it anymore. I lost one of my birds. So now I am left with this frame. And then this piece I can use on another project. So no problem that can confirm. I cannot remember. I, I really can't. I can't tell you the number of times I've told Russ when we're down here stamping. Dang it. Why did 
Didn't you remind me about the adhesive sheets? <laughs> So hopefully la labeling all those dyes will help. I lost a bird and I have to find that. So uh, I'll be back in a minute. Probably on the floor. All right. Well, this card is not going to have that bird. I'll find it eventually and add it. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do, because I cut out that center rectangle, I don't want to get adhesive all over everything else. See what that's going to bother me. Uh huh. So, what I'm going to do is grab my silicone sheet here because adhesive doesn't like stick to it really. And this is all nice and dry. So, I will put adhesive. I'm actually going to put it pretty much along all the edges. Now I'll lay this guy down and I can center this so that just the blue is sticking out and none of that hole that I cut away is sticking out. I'm a little worried that that's a little too wide. I need to check that with my trimmer. Might have to do just a little bit of surgery here. Yep. Okay. So if I there we go because otherwise it's going to cover up all the stuff that we have on the other part so okay Phew. see i did catch something <laughs> okay so we've got adhesive on all sides we've got a big hole in the middle of that What's in the middle? My bird, is that it? There's one. So we're gonna just line this right up. So we just have blue on all the outsides, but we're not wasting all of that that we can't see because nobody's gonna know it's not there anyway. So now we've still got some adhesive on here. I'm gonna add some just to the corners so that there's some on the blue cardstock. Oh, that was the one you could see. Okay, that's what I was wondering. I'm like, we should have two, and I know I, I can see one. <laughs> okay, whoops, ribbon. I almost did it again, but I caught myself. So that's, that's twice now I've caught myself. Okay, so here's another fun little trick for you. Trick or a tip or however you wanna, wanna look at it. So Stampin' Blends are your friend. White ribbon is your friend. And I need a piece about that long. So I want to wrap it around here. So most of our white ribbons you can just do this with. And because the Stampin' Blends are alcohol markers, they dry almost instantly. So that's awesome. So I'm going to use the light version of the Tahitian Tide and the, the big um, brush tip and just go on the edge here. And color my ribbon. I'm basically just dyeing it the color I want. So if you have, like if I had the Coastal Cabana blend, I would have used that. But this one was close enough, I felt, because the watercolor was all, you know, modeled effect anyway. So it didn't have to be quite matchy-matchy. All right. And then this one is going to go through our little tag. I love this uh, tag thing that they have for these dies because you can just pop your ribbon through one end and have it come out the other end. And you look so amazing and people are so impressed and they're like, I can't believe you made this. And you're like, I know, I'm pretty awesome. All these things get said. <laughs> okay, so I'm laying my silicone sheet down again because remember there's adhesive on the back of this guy. And I don't want it to stick to the paper or anything else. So um, so we'll just adjust that a little bit. Then I'm going to use my mini dimensionals on the back of here. So I'm going to put one right where that ribbon meets the edge of the cardstock. Let me get that close for you. 
so you can see. So it's holding that ribbon in place. And that's mostly just for when I'm futzing with it and getting it stuck down, because I'll attach it to the back as well. I'll put another one on the other side, and then I think one in the middle. And I will still kind of overlap that onto the cardstock so it doesn't uh, slide around with the ribbon. We'll take those backings off. See, this, this week I forgot to make myself a little um, bullet point list of this is the order you do all the steps. That's what happens when uh, the nanner starts just winging it. <laughs> so pop that up where we want it. And then we can just flip this around to the back and just tack it right onto that adhesive that's already there. Whammo. All right, now we can put it on, right? Yes. <laughs> Eyeball your edges. Now here comes our fun sticker. It releases pretty easily too. So, I mean, I realize I have some nails, but they're not excessively long. And because I cut this out for the corner piece, I'm just gonna get it lined up on the corner and the edge. And I'll go down this edge as well. And you have some time to kind of work with this. It is overlapping just a bit on the end. So I will snip that off. And then what I like to do is I like to take one of our acrylic blocks and I just like to run over that because I know that's not going to catch any of those edges and it's not going to peel that up or bend it, but it'll get that adhesive stuck on really nice. Yeah, don't you love that ribbon and tag? Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that on this uh, particular set. All right, so we're going to have our one bird. I will find the other one and stick them on as well because it really just needs two. And I do love that that die cuts two of them out to start with. So again, we're just peeling that sticker paper off. I think I'm going to put them over here. And there you go. Get that out of the way. So there's your fun card. So you can see I used a little bit more blue probably in this one today. A little more yellow and green kind of in the other one. So each of them is just going to turn out a little bit differently because, you know, you're never going to put your um your colors in exactly the same spot so it's kind of cool technique it's you know makes you look very artistic so i hope you will try it um, but i do have a few other samples as well and of course everything you saw here tonight can be ordered on my website here at stampernan.stampinup.net so let's look at those other um samples i've got for you the first three are all using our um What's it called? Amazing Silhouettes <laughs> stamp set and uh, coordinating dies. So here's our tree first. So this Silhouette stamps I really love because it's got that negative um, image in the middle and then everything around it is you're actually coloring in. So we've got, I think, three different. We've got some curry and some Cajun. And I don't know if we have anything else. Maybe some flirty flamingo. Um, and so all that spritzed. So this is on our shimmery white cardstock, which I bet is going to be pretty hard to see. Yeah, you can't really see it. In person, you can see a slight shimmer to it as it catches the light. It's almost like there's a really fine layer of like pixie dust. Oh, you're very welcome, Lucia. Glad you guys liked it. So um, yeah, this is on our shimmery white cardstock. So that'll also work on that one. This is on our plain basic white cardstock with the butterfly. And so you can see it does not give as much of a watercolory effect, obviously, as on the watercolor cardstock, but you can still see the variation in color. Get that closer. So I used the, I believe, the balmy blue and the night of navy only on this one. So obviously, if I had used some different colors, you'd have more contrast. This one was kind of my favorite favorite actually um i couldn't think of what to do with it and then decided to finally punch it out in a heart so um this piece is actually kind of a big leafy piece this is on our watercolor paper as well so you can see you get that kind of mottled you know 
very watercolory look. I love these greens together. That's the granny apple in the garden. And I picked those up in the cardstock and added a few of those cool butterflies. But look at how fun the color variation is on that. Love, love, love it. So this last one, I used the Nuts About Squirrels stamp set, which is a photopolymer stamp set. So it's one of the clear ones. And so you can see, I know I only used the cherry cobbler on this, but it's more of a, it's like a pink squirrel, <laughs> like the drink. <laughs> so, um, but you can see, I'll get that close. And it kind of ends up looking like, this is on the watercolor paper. It kind of looks like fur. <laughs> So it just kind of gives them like a textured appearance. Um, and as I said, I only did the um, cherry cobbler on it. I did not do any other colors, but it does give a little bit of a different effect because of the stamp material. And then I simply colored in the egg corn with our Cajun craze just straight on the paper and took a blender pen to this top part to um, blend it out a little bit but that's all just one color. I just colored a little more heavily on the top of the egg corn. So that is all of my crazy watercolor technique for you today. I don't know how to arrange these best. <laughs> there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, the texture on that squirrel, I thought it kind of looked like fur and it was kind of fun. So totally try it out with any of your stamps. Um, you'll get a feel for which ones really take to this technique well. Um, you do need a good surface area to really blend any colors on, um, you know, so you'll, so you'll get that effect and it won't just look like you just, cause I think that's part of what happened with the butterfly too, is there's really not a lot of surface area for that. So a little less blending happened there as well. Um, and I used just uh, monochromatic colors. So yeah, so let me switch back here to our main view. There we are. Hello, hello. So thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, if you found value in this video, I would love it if you would share it so your friends and family could also discover the value, maybe learn a thing or two, um, and maybe they would join you in some stamping. You never know. So uh, until next week, next Monday at 7, I am still Nan Gerlitz and happy stamping.